At temples like this, newlyweds will travel long distances to pray. Not for their future or health, they pray for a baby boy. But many do more than pray. Down alleys like this are dozens of clinics making millions of dollars using ultrasound machines. Here, this modern medical device is being used as a weapon to carry out an ancient tradition. But just last July, two activists conducted a sting operation, hoping to expose doctors who illegally identify and abort female fetuses. Posing as a husband and his five-month pregnant wife, they came to hear their test results. The doctor immediately breaks the law by telling them the sex of the baby. It is not a good report, he says, as it's a girl child. A girl child, says the husband? What should we do now? It should be aborted, says the doctor. The doctor tells the husband his wife is too far along in her pregnancy to perform an abortion, but for more money he's willing to illegally inject her to induce a miscarriage. It will cost around 60,000 to 70,000 rupees, he says, but the child will be aborted. This sting video was turned over to authorities and posted on YouTube. The clinic was shut down, the equipment seized and sealed, and these two doctors face possible charges. But the sad truth is, stings like these rarely lead to convictions. The police and the judiciary, they never implement the laws because they believe in the same thing and sometimes actually do the same thing. Despite this ambivalence by authorities, others like Dr. Mitu Kurana are fighting back. Five years ago, after a woman to accuse her husband of violating the law banning sex determination tests. In her lawsuit, she claims her husband and his parents illegally determined the sex of her twins and then pressured her to abort them. And when she refused, tried to kill them. Your daughter is sitting there in your lap right now. She's very, very attached to you. She wouldn't leave you for this interview. How much do they know of this story? They know everything. And how does a six-year-old wrap her head around that? She Somebody asked me wanted once, to? she was sitting in my lap, and she asked me that, Mama, could I have been killed when Grandmama pushed me down the staircase? I said, yes. So she just gave me a kiss and said, thank you, Mama, for saving me. That's it. Two lives saved out of millions who perish every year. But her crusade has come at a cost. For speaking out, Dr. Karana says she has lost her job and even received death threats. When we contacted her husband, he denied the allegation. The reaction of almost all the authorities here was that uh, it's me who is the criminal. So how many years have you been fighting this case already? Almost four years, three to four years. How long are you willing to fight? As much as it takes. Because my fight is that if this all can happen with a doctor, a pediatrician, how do I safeguard them when they get married? If this can happen to me, it can happen to them when they grow up. And that is the reason I am fighting it. Even India's prime minister acknowledges that gendercide has become what he calls a national shame. The man once charged with fixing the problem is K. Chandra Muli, India's Secretary of Health and Family Welfare. Do you agree with the Prime Minister that this is a national shame? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's something to be proud of. <laughs> Everybody knows where it's happening. What, why are more of those people being put out of business? You're right. We need to sort of, uh, probably, we're not being aggressive enough. People have always thought of India where women are well represented in, in, in government, and yet millions of girl babies aborted. It, what does that say about the value of a girl in India? I think you, you have answered your question. I've just admitted to you that it is something which we need to take care of. In a country of a billion people, it will take more than laws to change people's minds. But there are rays of hope. We traveled north to Punjab. Here and around the country, the government and charities have set up a network of orphanages called cradle houses. Down alleys like this one, unwanted baby girls are abandoned inside a drop box and pass from certain death into the arms of this extraordinary woman. My goal is to shelter the unwanted, to give them love. Her name is Prikash Kaur, but to the 60 girls who live in this orphanage she founded called Unique Home, she is affectionately known as Mama. 
And how old here? She's three days old. Oh, they are from the garbage and this is in the garden. Ah, great. Right. Mostly these girls are half dead. Half dead? Half yeah. dead. Because the mother takes so many medicines for the killing. To try and get rid of the baby? Dead. No child is turned away. These close quarters, which are immaculate, will be their home until they can make their own life choices. Well clothed and fed, this sisterhood studies, sleeps, and eats together. To Mama, who also grew up an orphan, every child is her daughter to raise, protect, and educate. It's important to empower and embolden these girls to make them stronger, so one day when they give birth to a baby girl, they will not give in to the pressure to play with nature. They should understand whatever their moms did to them, they should not do to their own daughters. She does not allow the girls to be adopted for fear that the outside world will again abuse or neglect them. Here, these girls, who were found in wells, drains, and dustbins, are safe, and I am their mother. My life is like a diamond, a priceless gift which God has given me. Lucy Singh is 19 years old and has lived at Unique Home since the day after she was born. She attends college and wants to be a teacher. She calls Prikash Kaur her mom, her dad, her everything. I feel I am the lucky one. None of these children know their real birth date, so each year they celebrate one giant birthday together. It is a haven from an outside world that would prefer they had <laughs> never been born. Gandhi once said to call woman the weaker sex is a libel. It is man's injustice to woman. What kind of world do you hope your daughters will grow up in and be young women in one day? Well, at least being a female is not a crime. At least the right to life that is being denied only because you're a female. As you just heard, Unique Home does not allow its children to be adopted, but there are so many other ways you can help. To find out, go to our website at abcnews.com slash 2020.